Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back for another episode of the Bean Dip Podcast. Fuck yeah. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, uh, it was my birthday last night, January 19th. Dude, awesome night. <clears throat> Super fun. Um, thank you for those who came. It was, it was great. It was, it was a nice, like, you know, we we jumped from uh, different things. You know, we did different things the whole night. We we started off. We we shot guns. I never shot a gun. You know, and we went to the Los Angeles Gun Club. It was uh, me, a couple of my comedian friends, um, and like my cousin and my girlfriend, and it was just for it was just us there first, and we. We chose, <clears throat> I chose a, a, a big old Magnum, like a, a, those big ass fucking handguns. Um, We got one of those tiny little, little guns. I don't know what you call them. They had all their names right there, but the fuck, I'm just looking at them and picking them, bro. I don't know. Fuck the names, you know, it's, it's like weed. You know what I mean? Like they're going to tell you, do you want fucking... Hallucination, no hallucination, OG, or kill yourself. Whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? It just doesn't fucking matter. Like, just give me one or the other, you know, or let me look at it. I'll pick one. But we chose like a little ass handgun, and then we chose like a regular gun. I don't know, just a standard regular gun, and also a, a, a Adam and uh, a rifle. Um, and it, you know, I was a little nervous at first because, <clears throat> you know, guns are a dangerous thing. You know what I mean? Like you, you see so many people on like with videos where they accidentally, they go off or something. So it's like, hold, I'm not trying to be in that situation where it's just like, boom, just like out of nowhere, you know? And they don't really necessarily show you too much. The guy, look, he was, he was a great um, he did his job. It was, he didn't, you know, he told us, but it wasn't clear, you know, and I think there's so much going on. We weren't sure how it worked. We were also wearing those fucking like earplugs also with the ear muffs. And this guy's trying to explain shit to us when we can't even hear each other when we're like talking right in front of each other, you know? So it was a little weird, but you know, we go in there and dude, the sound of guns is just crazy, dude. Like, I think that w when they portray it in movies, you know, that gives you like a good representation of a gun sound pew, pew, or whatever. You know, imagine that's pew, pew. <laughs> but like the sound of a gun in these big are explosions. You know, it's like boom. It's it's crazy. the The most difficult one I felt that was to handle and shoot. Well, not handle. All of them were decent, but the one that was like you could really like it fucks you up. You know, was the Magnum. Was the yeah the the revolver. That shit was hella kickback. It was, and I don't mean kickback when you're fucking chilling at the pad, smoking fucking weed, watching. Your, pa your favorite porn, you know, you're not chilling like that. The kickback is after you shoot, it fucking, it jolts your arms back, you know, because the, the explosion, you know, it just, I posted it up on my, my IG and, you know, when my cousin showed, I was like, damn, bro, like, you know, I felt it because, you know, your hand, your, your hands go up. But like when you don't, when you see it, it's different. It's just like, boom, like, oh, fuck. So, but the rest were pretty awesome. Um, my favorite was the rifle. That shit was super sick. Um, and, you know, we, we, uh, we did little competitions where we, um, we shot the rifle and we, we try to see who could get closest to the middle target. And hey, you know what? Surprisingly, everybody had a decent shot. 
so it's like here's the thing about here's the crazy thing about guns dude is like i don't think you need to be that great of an aimer the the bullet comes out so quick you know even if you're like even if you're not even the best even if you don't have the like most solid hand if you're not if you're trying to point for the eye and you don't get the eye you're going to get the cheek you know you're still going to fuck somebody up the bullet goes way too fast for you to even fuck up yeah it's weird because like it's so the the awkward thing about like a gun is like it's actually hard to not kill you. You know, it's it's it it's weird, dude, because they want you, you know, for safety reasons, they want you to like always have the gun held upwards. You know, so if it goes off or you accidentally shoot, it just goes up. But I'm telling you, bro, if any of those guns are like you know they're gonna be po- they're gonna be close to the side of your face. You know they're gonna they're still gonna fuck you up. You know like if it goes off, dude, you're going deaf. You know maybe not with like the little like pew pew gun. You know what I mean? But any one of the other ones, your hearing is gone. I think that's like an ex- that's a fucking explosion right next to your fucking eardrum. Um, <clears throat> but that shit was badass. My cousin bought me a cool ass sweater, really cool sweater. Um, I kept one of the shells from the Magnum. Yeah, Magnum forty four, forty four rem mag. Yeah, that gun gun was killer, dude. That one was super hectic. Um. Yeah, it it was it was awesome, and then we took a bunch of pictures. It was super cool. I'll probably like post up one of the pictures. Um, and that was just the the beginning of the night. That was, and what a great way to start it too. You know, like, you know, even so, my cousin she was in the na uh, the navy or something or the army or whatever. You know, and she shot a gun before, but um, she still was like a little like nervous, you could say nervous about, you know, shooting a gun. Who knows? I'm telling you, it's the thought of it is like, in, like thrilling when you're going to do it. But when you're actually there, it's like, oh, shit, you, you're actually trying to be careful, you know, and. So I can imagine if her, you know, who has gun, like, shooting experience, like, how us who haven't, like, shot a gun. I mean, I wasn't, I was actually looking forward to it, you know, but I just didn't want to, like, um, you know, fuck up. You know, it's a crazy thing. But, um, yeah, fucking awesome, dude. Uh, LA Gun Club. Uh, that was super sick. It, here's the funny thing, guys. I, I... I am a new person in 2023, and from here on out, I found two things that are um, dreadfully, unfortunately underrated, and that is shooting guns, of course. I mean, I mean it's, that's not even underrated. That's in a, like an American pastime, or in, <laughs> that's a world pastime. You know, people just have guns, and that just happens. Um, and two... Um, mall massages. Yeah, that's right. Mall massages. You know the Asian people that like fucking wait around trying to give you a massage? Let them touch you, dude. Let them hit your back up. It will be a nice experience. I know this is a segue, but I just want to let you guys know that's what I'm going to be doing as like a, to treat myself every now and then. I'm going to go shoot guns and then get a massage at the mall. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? I'm gonna fucking go 
shoot some fucking crazy artil- artillery and then, you know, have some little Japanese lady crack my back after. Um, but yeah, after, uh, after that we went to, so here's, here's the interesting thing. So I had no idea where we were going to eat, right? That was like up in the air the whole time until the, literally the last second when we left the gun range, when we left LA Gun Club. Um, and we're looking like, oh, what looks cool? This, you know. And I see on, you know, when I, I just put like some, I think I put cool restaurants near me. You know what I mean? Dude, kudos to Google to just know what's up, what cool is, right? And I think like on the fourth, on the list, it was like the fourth one or fifth one down. It's this bar in downtown LA called Here and Now. And, um, you know, we're, we don't know what to expect, but we go and it's this like nice little spot. Um, very classy looking, um, and uh, we go there. Where and you know, and coincidentally, there's a drag. There's drag bingo going on. So basically, what that is is this drag queen as a host with the microphone um, hosting bingo. And dude, let me tell you, probably one of the funnest times I've ever had playing bingo. You know, that shit was so much fun. And it was just crazy how that worked out because it was like, we weren't expecting, we don't, I didn't know any of this was going to go on, you know? I just like, you know, let's just try this spot. Fuck it. You know, it's a bar and it looks like it has food. That's basically what it came down to when I was making my decision. And it was just amazing, dude. Super amazing. Everybody loved it. You know, they're getting into it. And, you know, you're doing all, like, this talking dirty shit, like, throughout the the game. Like, um, <laughs> what would you say? Like, if you were so, if you were close to getting a bingo, the the host, uh, she would say, um, if you're close, you have to say in your loudest, gayest voice that you're so close. So, like... <laughs> You have just random people, even myself and some of the people at my table, like throughout the restaurant, whenever they're close to a bingo bean, oh yeah, I'm so close. <laughs> my voice is a little fucked right now, but dude, that shit was hilarious, dude. And his puns were amazing when it came to, um, you know, saying the, the letters and the numbers. It was great, dude. Um... The food was amazing too there, man. Probably one of the best chicken sandwiches I've ever had, yo. That chicken sa- that chicken in the sandwich was juicy as fuck, dude. I I was amazed. That shit was fire as hell. Their appetizers were amazing, dude. Hey, yeah, for real. Here and now. For any of the, uh, you people that are around downtown LA and look for a, a spot here and now. That's a that's a great spot. Um, <clears throat> um, fucking, yeah, and then what else? So, yeah, we do the bingo, and sometime later, there's a competition, and, you know, they find out it's my birthday and everything, and the host, the drag queen host, invites four males. Well, first, my girlfriend, she went up there. It was me, my girlfriend, this white dude, and this Asian dude. But it was an ass shaking competition. <laughs> My chick, she was like, "Oh nope, I'm out." So then she switched with the uh, the homie Blaze. He was one of the comedians right there with us, and um, he comes up. And so basically, we have to shake our asses, you know. And <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna have a video. I'll see if I have a video. If I could get one and then uh, post it on here too, maybe I'll try to do that. Uh, for this video, um, yeah, and uh, it was fun, dude. It was stupid, you know. We I got down on the floor, fucking throwing my ass in the air. It was, it was pretty fucking fun. And we got we got a free shot for it. And then, uh, 
you know, towards the end where when we're getting ready to leave, my cousin Chloe, she calls the drag queen over and tells this fool to fucking give me a lap dance and she's giving him money. Homeboy fucking starts putting his leg over me, starts like fucking moving around his hips and like doing like all this like seductive dancing or whatever and i'm just like oh my god dude and then eventually he gets my legs cut like picks them up and as if he's fucking me <laughs> oh shit dude it was uh i just put my hands up you know like <laughs> you know it's that's the thing i think that's what you do when you're like then when you're not in control and something scary is happening you just put your hands up like oh that that's it. No, like I don't know what to do here. You know, cops, put your hands up. Scary roller coaster. Oh shit, put your hands up. Drag queen fucking the shit out, out of you while they're or whatever fucking giving you a lap dance. Put your hands up. I didn't get then the drag queen didn't fuck the shit out of me. Okay, just you know that's how he danced on me or whatever it was. Ah. Oh. Man, dude, good times though. Good times. I took a picture with the drag after. It was um, she was cool. Good people. Um, yeah, and then after, after we just went to some place and did a show. Uh, why? Why? It was it was a show, but then you know the the guy. If he knows you, you're a comedian. He'll let you get up. You know, um, there was this thing. Uh, the spot called My Gym. I'll put it in the description if anybody wants to check it out. Um, yeah, no, we just ended the night there. Pretty fucking dope. Dude, my family are hecklers. They're fucking hecklers, dude. And look, if you guys are listening right now, it's all good. I don't give a shit. Honestly, some comedians need the heckle. They need the help on the stage. I'm not saying I don't. I need it. You guys, I, I was able to get some chuckles off of just talking shit about you guys so uh, just thank you guys for being there you guys are hecklers and it was a it was a great ass night last night and um hell yeah how fucking yeah um but dude i'm fucking sitting here in my undies dude my christmas undies with my new sweater with still long ass hair i need to get a fucking haircut um i'm fucking lagging it you know just playing ghost of tsushima all morning but i need to go pick up my car after this you know it's getting the oil change and hopefully i have enough time to get a fucking haircut um we'll see how that fucking goes um but dude i don't know if you guys have been uh seeing what's up with the um the new show one of the new shows on hbo max they did like this parody of Velma, you know, Velma from Scooby-Doo. Um, dude, that is probably maybe the most hated show ever, I think, ever. You know, if you look up on YouTube, go on YouTube. I mean, I do the Rotten Tomatoes thing as well. Fuck it, whatever. But for every show or movie, there's always two sides. There's like some people that thought it was really good. And then there's some people that thought it was trash. Dude, there are only videos that are trash, that are trashing it. There are no, there's one video that gives a review, but it's just a basic review of like ex explaining the, the plot and all that kind of stuff. I tripped out and I, I watched a little bit of it I didn't I didn't see I didn't see the whole thing um it what do I think about it I th okay so it's here's what it reminds me of um it kind of reminds me of like those those late night adult cartoons and they would parody 
uh, di- other different cartoons. Like, I think there's this one called Drawn Together. And for those of you that are probably at least 27 years old or older, you might know what's up with it. It used to be on, was it Comedy Central? I think it was on Comedy Central back back in the day. Yeah, Drawn, drawn Together. And this these kind of shows are very uh, satirical and heavy on the adult content. You know, sometimes it's just like, it's just like too much or something, you know, like that's, that's really what they're hanging their hat on is, is the, um, what, what's, what's that fucking word I'm thinking of? Not uh, gross, it, like on the um, raunchiness of it, right? Um, And I think that's what is like what they're trying to go do in this one. It's like in the beginning scene, it's just about, or it just shows like high school girls naked. Like, I mean, they're high school girls <laughs> showing their butt and their tits are covered in soap and their vagina is covered in soap. I mean, it's, it's questionable, right? Because it's, even though they're doing that, like the I think there's like the character has like a monologue or whatever in the beginning about people being pissed about characters' races being changed and this and that. It's like, um, so you're gonna mock people for being, you know, a little bit too uh, nostalgic with their favorite characters, but pet like I basically what pet or kid porn is. <laughs> <laughs> You're showing high school girls ass cheeks. Um, I don't know. I like obviously like sometimes that kind of stuff is uh is good. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's not bad, you know, especially if you're looking for that kind of thing. And you have to be put in in that you have to know you're entering in that headspace to watch something like that. Because uh what else about her like and it's maybe i i i just didn't see here's the thing there's like this like breed of of fucking uh main star act like uh female leads that are kind of these like sassy intellectual in your face kind of girl and that's basically what Valma is that she's just sassy, like very smart and in your face and doesn't take, you know, doesn't take shit. You know what I mean? She doesn't, she doesn't take no shit, right? She'll say, fuck your mansplaining and hit you with some cold, hard facts. I don't know. I don't know. But here's the thing. I'm not going to continue watching it. I don't care. I don't really care about it, you know? Um, I was never that much of a fan. Scooby-Doo is was like a thing to watch for me, but when there was nothing else on. You know, I was like, eh. Everything I wanted to watch is, is over, you know? So let me just watch some Scooby-Doo or whatever. And... I don't think they made these characters any more interesting. Like Fred is the this dude who's like hyper fucking like conceited or like narcissistic and he's trying to be in the image of his father. I mean, he did say one funny thing. I thought it was probably one of the funniest things said where he was like talking to Valma and then he was like uh like he didn't remember who she was and she's like dude what the fuck we talked yesterday he's like I'm sorry I just have this weird disease where uh I don't recognize people if they're ugly you know like, oh fuck that was kind of funny I'll give him that one you know but uh yeah I just don't know like do I care to see these 
kids solve crimes? Like I didn't even I didn't even finish when they started getting into Shaggy. He didn't seem like the same Shaggy, you know. But I didn't I didn't even finish it. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Daphne is Asian. At least that's what I thought I heard her say, but I don't know, man. I trip out on how heavily hated it is. Um, a part of me wondered if it is just white people being pissed about these fake characters' races. Like, dude, stop being so pissed off about it already. Like, who the fuck cares at this point? You know, like, don't watch it. Like, everybody wants, we all wanted to watch it. Honestly, I, would, I wasn't going to watch Velma. Like, I wasn't interested anyway, period, you know, not because of like, dude, even if even if they made her regular light skin Velma, that that wasn't my um, that wasn't my initial thought. I just thought like, oh, wow, they're giving Velma a spotlight because, you know, over the past couple years, they've like somehow sexualized Velma, right? Like she's been out there in like the the meme world or all that kind of stuff like you know being sexualized so i that's what that's where i thought i was like basically kind of like a harley quinn kind of moment right where harley quinn like became they made her character where she's like her own character and now she's kind of sexy but spunky and this and that i don't know man the hate, the hate on it is just a little bit too like it's like dude, who ca- who cares, bro? Like, but at the on the at the other end, I feel it's like you know what? Can we stop trying to make these old school characters modern by changing their ethnicity? Because that ethnicity shit matters. That might change the whole role of the character. You know. Just because you make fucking Velma Indian or whatever, that doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. It <laughs> that doesn't mean shit. It's just a it's just a poor attempt to like stay modern, you know, um, or to stay current, right? In a weird way, you know what? Maybe maybe like television. But these are streaming services, right? Like television, television's not. Who knows? I don't know, man. I, I look. I, I'm not gonna watch. I'm not gonna watch it. I'm not interested in the Velma shit. You guys, I'm telling you, try watch Drawn Together. Whoever is out there, list watch Drawn Together and then watch Velma. You'll just see it's like similar shows. You know, it's just gonna be some raunchy cartoon comedy stuff. And typically those cartoons are just like, okay, you know what I mean? They're just there for you to just get high and not give a fuck about, you know? Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know. Watch Valma, don't watch Valma. I don't give a shit. And I'm not going to give it any bean dips because I didn't even, I didn't finish it and I wasn't interested, so... I'm going to give it zero bean dips because I just don't care. Um, some fucking terrible news recently, dude. Terrible news. Uh, I mean, I guess it's not the worst, you know, in the sense where it's like this person's life is over, but it's not good. Um Recently, Andrew Callahan, he he has this show, um, I guess some people would call it a viral sensation. Call, it's Channel 5, uh, All Gas, No Breaks. Um, and I, he started off on YouTube. I believe, I, I'm, I'm not entirely too sure, but I know I found him on YouTube. Um, and he would, you know, yeah, that's where he's at. And he goes out and... <clears throat> interviews like fringe communities basically like all these outsider you know quote unquote outsider communities right so some i mean 
not all of them are outsider. Let me, he'll, you know, he'll he'll interview like some extreme Trump supporters, or he's went to like these different um, conventions, like where it's like uh, different things that people believe, and you know they've devoted their life to it, where it's like <laughs> they're a little weird or something. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, he had this successful channel slash show on YouTube. Like I said, Channel 5, uh, All Gas, No Breaks. And then recently came out with a documentary. Might be a documentary or a movie. I don't know what you call it. Maybe a documentary. And um, it was called Channel 5, This Place Rules. And I do recommend it. It was really good. Um, very entertaining. Um, you know, it's it's the rise and fall of basically like kind of the um, the that the huge red wave of Donald Trump, QAnon, and well, it might just be like Donald Trump and QAnon, you know, and. You know, basically the extreme right, basically. Um, I mean, the Republicans are, they're still around, but, you know, it, it ends up bleeding into the, you know, January 6th. Um, like I said, I liked it, but the, the terrible news is shortly after that drops, you know, it starts coming out that Andrew Callahan has been sexually assaulting women like all over the United States. And it's like, oh, my God, dude, like. Of course, right? Like, oh, dude, like, I mean, here's the thing. I'm not going to say like that's uh, good and it's not good. It's bad, like. You don't, you know what I mean? Like how, I don't know, dude. I don't know how you, how fools are just out here just assaulting bitches and then they just get success. It's just, what the fuck is this, dude? Is this just like, here's, here's the weird thing that trips me out. Some, now I'm starting to wonder if like when, with, you know, when maybe it's true with great power comes great responsibility. You're getting this like little slice of power, right? This little slice of fame, you know, and you know, you, in a way you're exploiting, you're exploiting your, your power of in fame, you know, and it just makes me wonder, is it true? Most of these dudes who have money are just assaulting bitches the same as most of these dudes who have who are too rich and are too famous, who once used to be just, you know, only fucking women are now sucking dick because it's just they have too much. I don't know if you guys see the comparison. I'm, I don't even know if I'm saying, <laughs> saying it correctly, but it just... Like, wow, bro, how and why, dude? <clears throat> I guess it came out like he was just pushing himself onto girls. Like he wasn't, um, when they would say no, he wasn't taking that for an answer. I don't think there's anything that came out that he was raping anybody. But still, like, kind of just pushing himself onto the females. Um... I don't know, man. It's weird because it's like, it's just one of those things where it always comes down to it. It's like when, like, what do you do, dude? You know, when you separate the artist from their work, you know? Can you separate the artist from their work? And it's very hard to, I'll tell you that it's very, very hard to. Um, I don't want to say that I wouldn't ever watch his stuff again, you know, cause that's just, that doesn't even sound like me, you know, like, oh, he did this. Oh, I'm never, 
that just sounds fucking pathetic. Like, who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? Um, but I think it's still going to be affecting the mind, the brain, you know, seeing homeboy. It's like, because it's going to make me wonder, like, how are you going to continue doing what you do, what you love to do, which is be a journalist and report on these crazy stories when people are going to recognize you and see you for assaulting women, you know, I, I think that's going to be tough and it might be distracting. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a shame, man, because yeah, that was one of the great things coming out of the internet, you know, like it was, it was cool to see him put himself in these uncomfortable situations being an outsider looking into these outsider communities you know and almost like his presence on the ca on camera and as a journalist and being in those moments is he blends in so well he does not need to be doing much. He just stands there looking awkward, like asking him questions and going along with whatever. And it just blends in. And these people are revealing themselves to him. That's how you know you have a good, a good person, like, like a, a, an interviewer, you know, somebody who knows how to get stuff out of people, you know, and he doesn't say much. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, damn shame, dude. Um, I I don't know. I think per, I think homeboy is just gonna have to take a, a step back, and probably be out of the light for at least a couple years, maybe. You know, because I don't think when you're in that situation and say you've like assaulted a woman or done something to her where you kind of you violated or just in general not even a woman where you just violated somebody and then this person that you violated now they see you are are having some some fame some success and good things coming your way it's in their eyes they're gonna think that's not fair you know so dudes guys including me you know like trying you know when we're trying to like reach for our highest goal and do what we love doing you gotta be careful man you're you're no longer when when we're being we're putting ourselves in the in the micro or under the microscope of everybody Okay. So it's going to be hard for you to li live this double life where, yeah, you got the camera on you, but dude, that camera doesn't stop following you. We're not living in the 90s, the 80s, a set where dudes could hide. You know what I mean? It was. It, it was darker times. They didn't have LEDs back then. You know, they didn't they didn't have cell phones with lights. They didn't even have cell phones. There was a camera and then there are caves. That's it. Now we have cameras in our caves. So I don't know, man, like unless like dudes are just mentally ill and we just have to do things fucked up like that I don't it's weird I, I I just it's just fucking weird like you know scandals where you like say you hook up with where you cheat on somebody like okay I guess that fucking happens that there's no harm in that right like you fucked up you fucked up your relationship but that's not damaging i guess you can say to 
to somebody. It it's gonna hurt your your partner, but not in the sense where you're you're violating somebody and making them do stuff against their will. Um so that's what I'm talking about, where it's like like why, man? Like why the there's no need because if you do have some success, some fame you don't need to try that hard. You know what I mean? Like, and dude, if you're not getting pussy, fucking so what? Like, who gives a fuck, dude? You know, fuck these bitches. I mean, except for my listeners, right? You actually, I'm listeners. Look, if you want to get fucked by Andrew Callahan, I don't care. I'm not talking about you. I'm I'm talking in a general sense, like. There's no need to fucking, like, force a situation, bro. You know, you go out there, you make an attempt. If it doesn't work out, dude, you go home and fucking jack that shit off, dude. Fucking bust a nut, dude. And you'll be like, wow, clarity. You know, I didn't actually want that person, you know? It's just crazy to me, dude. I don't understand it. Like, how do you not think it's going to, like, come back at you? And then there's, like, tweets. Who knows dating back how long? And here's the other thing that trips me out. Like, if this has been going on for so long, why is it? Why does it only get huge when he drops his, his biggest thing? Like, why doesn't it happen way before? That's the, that's the fucking craziest shit, dude. Why doesn't he get caught up way before? Why is it only a big deal when somebody does a big deal? That's, I don't even want to speculate what that is. You know, it's just, it's troubling. Um, yeah, and I, I don't know. I, I just hope the best for everybody. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Um... But yeah, man. Hell yeah, dude. Shit. But yeah, everybody. Today. Fucking gotta go to work. I'm actually gonna be a cook today. I'm gonna be a cook for Ha Ha's Comedy Cafe. Um, I guess they're, they're the cook, he, he went out. Um, he's out. He, he went for vacation. He's gonna be gone for a month, so... I'm going to be doing some cook work, which is fine. It's going to be chill, French fries, fucking chicken fingers. And I think they said chips and guacamole. So I'll fucking do that shit. Who gives a fuck, you know? Um, And I've been a cook before and fuck it, dude. Hopefully, she, hopefully I get paid good. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know how much they get paid as a cook. He's an old man. He's been there forever. I, I'm i assuming that he's got to, like, make some kind of good money there. You know, you're spending most of your days there unless you have an early job. So, but who knows? Let's see. Hopefully, hopefully she's like, you know, when I mean she, the owner, Terry, she's hopefully she's like, you know what? Fuck it. Take take some stage time, dog. Like, hit it up. Fuck yeah, thank you, finally. Um, we'll see, though. Yeah, man. Ah, uh, shit, dude. I think that's it for today, folks. It was a fucking great, like I said, great-ass fucking birthday. Don't watch Velma, or do watch it. I don't give a shit. And damn, yeah. Damn shame about Andrew Callahan. Um... You know, like, hopefully, you know, if you hear this podcast, bro, hopefully everything ends up working out where you could get better, you know, and, you know, right, right some wrongs or whatever. Um, but yeah, everybody, uh, I do have some shows coming up. Um, if you don't know already, I'm, I've ta- I've spoken about it already. Uh, I have a show on the 27th in Anaheim at the House of Blues. 
I will be putting the link in the description. You could ch check that out. Um, that following day, I have a show in Palmdale at the Drunk and Stoned Festival, um, hosted by Drunk and Stoner. And I'll put that information at the bottom too. Um, yeah, I, there's a show in February at the Fourth Wall in in Hollywood. There's two in March. I have one at the Haha ha ha Comedy Cafe, and then so on the third, actually, I'm gonna have one in Corona. I don't know the exact location, um, but in Corona, and then March fifth, I'll be at Haha. Ha. Comedy Cafe for and uh, sorry Anthony, I don't want to fuck his name up. Street T D. Let me see his fucking last name. He's a he's a Italian guy. Let me see, dude. Fuck it, bro. Anthony, his show. Um. And yeah, uh, but you know, I'll just be posting up just the link for the first upcoming two upcoming shows. And um, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Love you guys as always. And um, catch you next time. Peace.